Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday evening Bible study. We are uh, at the home of Sister and First Lady Dorothy Morris. Uh, she happens to be our executive uh, director and producer and also our choir uh, director this evening. And we're just so delighted uh, to um, have her uh, uh, with us, uh, to be with her this evening. Uh, we trust that you all are being blessed and staying safe, and I hope that you all are not traveling unless you absolutely have to, because that weather is rough out there. Uh, it's snowing, ice, and uh, it's also, uh, uh, this precipitation is just unbelievable. Uh, it is very uncharacteristic uh, for our time, so I want all of you all to be safe wherever you are. Don't travel unless it is absolutely necessary, and certainly that we're in the middle of this uh, pandemic. And so, uh, Pastor, want you to be safe, uh, want you to be secure, and certainly prayerful. Uh, so uh, we have not traveled. We did not go to the church for our recording uh, this evening. Uh, we are at home in Cleveland, and so uh, we trust that you all are at home. You're staying safe and you're being warm. God bless you. Uh, we are in 1 Corinthians, uh, the 12th chapter. Uh, we have already begun it on last Wednesday, uh, but we will start at, uh, proper for acclamation purpose, we'll start at verse 12 of 1 Corinthians. I know we touched on it in our last meeting, and we hope that we'll be able to finish it if it's the, the Lord's will. Uh, so let's again have our word of prayer, and we'll go forward with our study. God, our Father, thank you so much uh, for being God. We thank you for allowing us to come into your presence one more time and to study you out of your word, your inspired word. Holy Spirit, we thank you so much uh, for leading us and guiding us and just being our comforter, our teacher, our guide, in our leader, our convictor, our all in all, we thank you so much for God, the Holy God, designed it. Jesus, our Christ, uh, paid the price, and the Holy Spirit superintends his church. We thank you for this study. And may we not only be hearers and learners, but we'll be doers of your holy word. Thank you right now. In Jesus' name, we do pray and ask it all. Amen. All right. Um, in this 12th chapter of uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, we've, uh, we've already made a good start in it. Uh, we know that Paul, in dealing with the questions that uh, this church had, because as you know, it was a church that was very gifted church, a very gifted church, uh, but they had so many problems, and they did not prioritize their gifts. And Paul is writing this letter uh, to let the church know that we belong to each other, number one. And of course, this is certainly is applicable uh, to, uh, 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 to the church in this day and age. We belong to each other. Not only do we belong to each other, but we need each other. We belong to each other, and we need each other. We belong, we need, and then we affect each other. What happens to one should happen to the other. And of course, he makes this analogy of the church, or the metaphor, uh, as the body of Christ. As the, as the church is, so is the body. So he makes this, this metaphor, this analogy, uh, and so he uh, is writing, uh, this, church, writing this church uh, concerning uh, the spiritual gifts. Uh, the spiritual gifts, uh, because they had gotten uh, it mixed up as to uh, how uh, one gift was being rated over the other, how, how the church was giving some gifts more valuable than more value than the other. Uh, so then, the points we want to rate, if you if you're making notes, uh, some of the points that we want to cover uh, in the, in this chapter, uh, number one, uh, he talked about the church uh, as a human body, as a picture of Christ. And his church. That's number one. It's a picture of Christ and his church. And of course, number two, uh, the same, some uh, are, are less gifted feel that they were unimportant in the body of Christ. 
And of course, Paul cleared that up, that some of them felt that because they had a gift, it was less gifted, and it was not as important as some of the other gifts. And number three, uh, in some of the gifts, uh, some of those who were gifted felt that they were more important to the body of Christ because of that arrangement in the body. And that's number three. Some felt that they were more gifted. Some felt that they were less gifted. And then, of course, three, God has put uh, both the presentable and the unpresentable in one body. And we'll explain that. There were some gifts that were more presentable, and there were some that were not as presentable, but they were all a part of the body of Christ, and then we will uh, deal with that uh, as well. And, and, num and number four, each gift is a member of the body of Christ, and as a result of each gift being a body of Christ, each gift has its own place. Each gift has its own place in the body of Christ. And we will plunge into that uh, in more depth and detail. And then, and, and fifthly, uh, each is to cover, covet the very best gift. The very best gift. And this is as we, as we end, as we wind up of the chapter and after he talks about each gift, and he elaborates on each gift, and then he talks about the gift that we should covet more than the other gifts, because they tended to give some of the gifts a more value. And uh, there are some, some misconceptions that we want to clear up, because the human body, being the picture of Christ, and the church, and as we uh, 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 as we start on this portion of it, uh, particularly the 12, 13, uh, uh, it deals with the spirit baptism. The spirit baptized us into one body. Let me read these, uh, these, uh, uh, these three verses, and then we'll talk about it in more detail. For as, this is verse 12 now, you, you're keeping up, and I've asked you to read ahead of time so that we uh, won't have to read each scripture. You will already uh, have read it, and we'll just uh, elucidate on it. Uh, verse 12, for as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Verse 13, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jew or Gentile, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. And I'm going to read 14. For the body is not one member, but many. The point here is, is that the Spirit baptizes us into one body, Christ himself. Now this is where uh, there has been uh, a, a misconception over the years because some possessed certain gifts and coveted though that particular gift over the other gifts. And so uh, it caused a, uh, confusion and it caused schism in the body of Christ. And on last week, I explained to you what schism, what a schism is. Schism is, uh, is a uh, division in the body. That is, it's got this disunion, this, this uh, 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 misapprehension, uh, this union, a separation in the body. And sect is uh, attack outside of the body. And so it caused this confusion within the body because they were coveting the wrong thing. And so listen to this, and this is what this our commentary had suggested, and I think it's very important, uh, that uh, before conversion, the, Cor the Corinthian uh, believers had been 
in idolatry. They were enslaved by evil spirits. And so they lived in fear of the spirits and were led about by some diabolical influence. And so it affected them. And they brought this, uh, 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 they're probably a product of your environment. And so they brought these idolatrous spirits into the church. And so now here, uh, Paul is saying that they are all baptized into one spirit. Verse 13, Paul goes on to explain how we became members of the body of Christ by one spirit, by one spirit. And we were all baptized into one spirit, into the body. So they were all baptized, they were all saved because they accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. So they were baptized into one body. But just as our bodies, physical bodies, uh, have many members, so are the church. So there were different gifts. And these gifts were basically credentials that, that the Holy Spirit blessed them with so that they could witness to a pagan world. So they were all, they were credentials. And you know, credentials are, are licensed, credentials are what authenticates you. That's what, what validates you. And so then, uh, so the mere literal translation of this one spirit, uh, it, it just, it means that we were baptized into one body. Just as water is an element uh, in which we are emerged in, in the believer's baptism, which is an ordinance. So is the spirit. Uh, you're emerged in the spirit as we are emerged in the water, which signifies that we have been saved. The water won't save you, to be sure, but you have to be saved before you get to the water because you've heard the old saying, if you go down a wet devil, and you'll come up a dry devil. And there hasn't been any change uh, whatsoever. And so also the spirit is the agent who does the baptizing. Thus by one spirit, this is more probable and the understanding meaning. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit took place on the day of Pentecost. Remember Acts, the first chapter of Acts, uh, after, uh, after uh, uh, 40 days Jesus stayed. And then on that fifth day, he went back to the Father. But then the Holy Spirit came on the day of, of Pentecost. And so that was when, the, that was the beginning of the church, the day of Pentecost. And so the church was born at that time. And so we partake of the benefit of that baptism when we are born again. And we become members of of the body. So then we all are saved and we're just gifted differently. And then uh, uh, a little bit uh, 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 another approach to this, uh, and which is really important point that we should make, by the way, is that um, first the baptism of the Holy Spirit is that divine operation which places the believer into the body of Christ. The, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, when we accept him, then we are baptized then by the Holy Spirit. And it is not the same as water baptism. It's not the same as water baptism. And some uh, uh, have made that a denominational issue. Uh, this is clear from Matthew 3 and 11 and John 1 and, and 33 and Acts 1 and 5. You remember when uh, John says, you know, I came to baptize you unto repentance, but there is one that is coming that is mightier than I. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And that, of course, Jesus Christ. And he said, and he said whenever you know, I go away, and that when, but that when I go away, then the comforter will come, because as long as I'm here, the comforter will not come. And so he's the one, that's the agent that baptizes us into the body of Christ. And so uh, it is not a work of grace a subsequent to salvation whereby believers become more spiritual. And that's why misconception many times come about is that uh, we grow in grace. As a child, uh, it's universal. As a plant, we grow from the seed and we grow, we mature, we progress. That's when we are saved, we're justified, 
and then there is sanctification, and then there's glorification. So we mature. We mature. So it is not like we'll get uh, salvation, then we'll go and get some more. Uh, and, and some people maintain that, and as a result, uh, we claim a higher level of spirituality as a result. That's untrue. At the time of salvation, that's when we're baptized into the Holy Spirit. We're baptized into the body of Christ. And uh, so it was with the Corinthian believers. Uh, and so all the Corinthians had been baptized, but not all spoke in tongues. And this was the uh, what Paul maintained was the least coveted of the gifts. And uh, they made that the Corinthian more important than the other gifts, prophesying and the miracles and faith and so forth. And so they were using the, the tongue talkers uh, 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 had created the aura in the Corinthian church that they were more spiritual than the rest. And Paul is suggesting that this is the, the least covenant. In the list of it, this is the last one. Uh, that that he lists, and some maintain that because it was the last one didn't mean that it was the least of importance. But we just looking at the reading of the word, and he used it, the tongue is on the last of that list uh, because uh, people were using that as having a superior gift than the other gifts. And Paul is bringing this into proper perspective because it had caused some to feel intimidated in the church cause them to feel less spiritual, underappreciated as being the least uh, uh, in the body. And so Paul was clearing, uh, clarifying that. And so the verse goes on to say that believers have all been made to drink into one spirit. And so he really uh, uh, nails it in. So all of them have been made to drink into one spirit. And so uh, he says, now uh, we will, uh, uh, and we'll go forward with the, with the, uh, with the latter one, uh, particularly as, it, as he kind of closed this thing out. All right? So then, and then when we uh, go forward with uh, verses, uh, you know, 14 through 20, uh, and let me go back up and make sure that we, we've got this down pat for those who are taking notes, uh, the point is that the human body and the body of Christ pictures what the Holy Spirit does. One, Holy Spirit baptizes a believer into one body that is in the Christ himself. And uh, also, in number two, there's another significant fact in the verse as well. It says we all have to drink into one spirit. The spirit has entered into our bodies and he dwells within the heart and lives of the believer. All right? And so, when John wrote 14, 16 through 17, he says, And I will pray to the Father that he will give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom God, uh, whom the world cannot receive, because it has seen him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwell with you and shall be in you. So it is a divine indwelling when you accept him as your personal savior. All right. Um, uh, let me, uh, as I, I move forward, Romans 5 and 1, let me, I want you to, uh, 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 we've, we studied this in, the, in Roman. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace, we have acceptance uh, with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. All right? So, now, when we look at verse 14 uh, through 20, uh, this deals with uh, some who are fifth less gifted. And, and, and people feel like that in church because we see some members who are doing this uh, uh, look like more than others uh, who are always uh, on the front line of the church. Some tend to feel uh, that they're less gifted uh, so Paul is setting this straight. Uh, you're part of the body of Christ, and uh, you shouldn't feel less gifted. You shouldn't feel less able. You shouldn't feel less capable. You shouldn't feel less, less able. 
less worthy, uh, that you are insignificant, that you are unimportant in the body of Christ, uh, that you feel inadequate in the body of Christ. And Paul is, 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 is making the raising the low places and pulling down high places and then the crooked places, making them straight and rough places. He's tend to making them smooth with the body of Christ. Uh, he says uh, we shouldn't, uh, the fact that uh, some are feeling this way uh, is false, says the body is one significant member, it's one organic structure. But many members, every person who truly belongs to the body of Christ or to the church is significant and important in the body of Christ. God didn't make no junk. And so he wants them to know uh, that four significant facts about the church and the body of Christ. Four significant facts uh, in this uh, narrative, 14 through 20, and that is, number one, each member is necessary. Each member is necessary. Uh, he says, using that the foot may not be as gifted as the hand in handling things, but, this, but the foot is still a part of the body. Now, the ear may not be able to envision things like the eye, but the ear is still a part of the body. He's making the same claim. And, uh, and, and secondly, each member has an essential function. Each member, each one of us have an essential function, and nobody can take your place in the body of Christ, no matter how many. Nobody can take your place. You bring something unique to the body of Christ. He says the eye, the ear, the nose, they all have a function. None can do the function of the other. They are mutually exclusive and significant. Each member has its own function, and no other member can do the function of the other member. So each one is important. Each one. If the whole body, he says, if the whole body was an eye, it would be a freak. It would be uh, in a sideshow in a circus. It would be, the body would be inoperative, unfunctionable, useless. It would be an atrocity for those who thought that, that this is, that your gift is more great, is much greater than the other. And so the thought that we take uh, is that three significant applications the body of Christ, the church can operate only if enough members function as they are gifted to function. And secondly, the body, the church becomes handicapped if some members do not function and do the work they are gifted to do. Thirdly, the ability of the body to operate is determined by the number and efficiency of its members. Really. And so each member is set in the body as God will. God is so awesome. The genius of God. It's a, it's so, he's so infinite. And our finite minds cannot begin to grasp uh, the beauty, the significance of our God. Each one is placed in the body. If we had to place it, we might have a, an eye in the back of my head so we could see what's going on, and then one eye in the front, and then a ear somewhere else. But God has placed them all in the body. And the eye uh, sees because God gave it the ability to see. Each function, each one, God gave you the ability to see. So what right have you to brag about anything? And so the ear hears because God gave it the ability to hear and the same is true about the church. Note the word, every one of them, every member has been set in the church by the Holy Spirit and gifted by God. So whatever you have, God gave it to you. And so you may decide that someone has to beg you uh, to perform your function. I beg the difference. God gave you, he gifted you. 
and it's a gift to you from the foundation of the world, and he wants you to perform and to walk in your purpose. Always walk in your purpose. Stay in your lane, not walk in someone else's lane. Each member is distinct. Put together there in one body. If one member exists, where would the body be? If only one member exists, where would the body be? Of course, there would be no body. So it is with the church. If there's only one member in the church, he or she would be significant, the most important person around. But where would the church be? The point is clear. The church is not one significant and important person. The church is many members, all significant and important. But no, despite the diversity, the church is still one. Uniformity, unity, uniformity in the body of Christ. And look what Paul says, uh, and when we uh, remind you, when we read, when we studied Rome, in Roman 12, 6 through 8, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whereby prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, the proportion of faith, the measure of faith, the value of faith. God determines the value. You all, Corinthian church, you all don't determine the value. God determines the value. And uh, uh, whatever it is, let us wait on our ministering. All he that teaches, teach. All he that exalt, exalt. And he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. And then 21 through 23. The church, some who are more gifted feel they are more important to the body. And that's 21 through 23. Trust you read it. The point here is a sharp rebuke that he is, is, uh, uh, he is rendering to those who try to dominate or uh, impose their will upon the church. A person's own will and desires are never to be pushed forward and forced upon the church. Every member is important and significant and must be considered too. So he is rebuking those who are uh, who getting out of line. And he wants them to, them to know in this, in this section that the less, the weaker members, the less gifted are actually more important. More important, he said, the word feeble, uh, uh, the sickly member, it, it, it shows that in appearance, the lesser members seem to be important. But they are not. They are essential in the, in the body. In fact, they are actually more necessary. The average layman who served as a, per, as a personal worker, although he is never seen, by the crowd is just as much an essential as the evangelist is. The, the parts of our body that you can't see, the kidney, you know, the liver, those parts and other parts that, that you can't see. Just as important as the hand or the eyes or the ears that you can see. The part that you dress up, the hand, the, the face, the features. But then what about those comely parts, those parts that you can't see that's hidden? It just, you let them get sick. You have a fever. The whole body gets sick. And so uh, the uh, unpresentable parts, he's called that, the unpresentable parts of the body are treated with great honor. And so the reference here, you know, is, is, is the clothing again. And so we, the less gifted should be recognized and treated uh, as, as with, with special nobility. For they are actually more important. So uh, Luke 22, uh, 26 have bring this home to us as well. But ye shall not be so, but, but he that is greatest among you, let him be the younger. And he that is chief, 
and he that does serve. For I say unto you, Romans 12 and 3, though the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think himself more highly than he ought to think. Don't think yourself more highly uh, than you ought to think. And um, just bear with me just a little bit. Uh, we can finish this. And so what he wants us to do, particularly 24 through 26, God has put both the presentable and the unpresentable in one body. He's put us all in one body. The presentable parts of our body have no need for clothing. Therefore, we do not clothe them. And so when we look at, at, uh, uh, at, at the, the point that he, 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 he presents here, in verses 24 through 26, uh, God has tempered or blended the members together to keep them from clashing. Listen to that. He put them together to keep them from, from clashing. There should be no jealousy, no pride, no divisiveness within the church, for God has gifted every believer to Complement the other. God has gifted all to function together in harmony. You shouldn't be jealous. One should not be jealous of the other. Covet somebody else's gift. That's a sin. Because what you're saying to God is you're not satisfied with how you designed this, how you set this into the body, how you gifted me. You just maintain your role as how God has gifted you, and then it will be well with you. And secondly, God has tempered or blended the members together to create a natural care for one another. We should care for one another. We should love one another. Note the words, the same care, the very same care should be shown one member just as you would the other members. We should put one over the other. And uh, what he says in, in Matthew 25, 35 to 36 for I was hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to see about me. And what would the king say? What would he say? And then verse 27 through 30, as we prepare to wind down, uh, the church, in the church, each believer is a member of the body of Christ and has his own place in it. And the point here is, is forceful. It's forceful. Uh, and he emphasized, ye again, ye are the body of Christ. Ye are the body of Christ. Collectively, we have supreme privilege. Collectively, we're stronger together. We have supreme privilege. We are members of Christ, of his body, of the body of Christ, the Son himself. Members in particular, individual, each one of us is a member of Christ's body. Not a single believer is excluded and no person is a member, uh, is a greater member than the other, but is more than the other. And so, uh, when he illustrates this, uh, Paul illustrates the points by listing some of the gifts. Uh, he says two significant things. Two significant things. God has set and gifted each member in the church. For example, he lists eight gifts here. And I'm sure you've read them. He lists eight gifts here. Uh, the first one, the apostle. The church. The apostle of the church. And secondly, and uh, there were, you know, those who would argue that there are no the apostolic age uh, as uh, there are no more apostles in the narrow sense, and that is those who have seen the risen Christ. Of course, when he went up, there were a number of uh, who were there uh, when he went up, and uh, of course, the, a number of them would uh, uh, have seen the risen Christ. But in terms of the the the, uh, the doctrine of the church. Of uh, the apostolic age ended. Paul maintained that he was an apostle too because he uh, seen, had seen the risen Christ 
on the Damascus Road. And so some had maintained that he was not an, a real, an authentic apostle, but he says, I was born out of due season. I was not one of the ones who walked the dusty road with Jesus, but I met him on the Damascus Road. That's the narrow sense of it. But then in the in in wider sense uh, that you're a messenger of Christ, so you will become, some maintain they will, that would uh, in, in, uh, involve them as being an apostle. Uh, but uh, that was, that's a discussion for another day. Uh, and then secondly, God has set prophets in the church. Set prophets in the church. And third, God has set teachers in the church. The gift of teaching is the gift uh, to instruct believers in the truth of God and his word. It is the gift uh, to root and ground it in the doctrine, reproof, correction, and righteousness. And then there's also the gift of miracles and the gift of healing. He's mentioned here the gift of helping, the gift that does just what it says, help people. Uh, and then there's the gift of government or administration. Uh, the Greek word is descriptive here. It refers uh, to the pilot of the ship or the person who steers the ship through dangerous channels and oceans. And so it is uh, the church needs, you know, people in the church uh, to steer it uh, in, uh, in, 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 in the right direction as it journeys, as it reaches destination that God has ordained. And there are gifts of different tongues. And uh, the point to note is that all members do not have the same gift. Apostles, again, prophets, teachers, workers of miracles, gift of healing, gift of tongues, interpretation of tongues. So as we bring this to a close, my sisters and brothers, um, uh, and that, that 31st uh, verse, Paul tells us about, he brings it home to us. And uh, he says, in verse 30 and 31, having all the gifts of healing and all speak with tongue, do all interpret. What would the church be? All of you don't have the same gifts of healing and speaking in tongues or interpretation of tongues. But in verse 31, and this is this is I mean this is powerful here. But covet, covet earnestly the best gift, and yet show I unto you. A more excellent way. We're going to leave that. And this is very powerful here. He's going to tell us in going into verse 13, and then and, and this is sandwiched between there is this chapter, chapter 13, which is considered the love chapter, is sandwiched between uh chapter 12 and chapter 14. And Paul is saying is I, I believe it today, I can't wait the next Wednesday if the Lord says the same. But Paul is going to show him a a more excellent way. He says, but covet not all these gifts that he has enumerated here, that Paul is saying, but covet honestly the best gifts and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. And that's it. And this is the best one that he is going to uh, to show us. And uh, 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 my producer tonight is is, uh, is, is, is is saying I've kind of overstayed my time but I really wanted to get to this. Uh, God bless us. Thank you all so much for, for watching. Uh, we're probably a little bit late getting started tonight. Uh, thank Brother Genesis for uh, making sure that uh, that we own tonight. Uh, God bless you. We may be a little off. I hope you all stay with us. And um, uh, God bless and keep you. Let us uh, have a word of prayer as we close. God, our Father, thank you for this time of sharing. We thank you for our wonderful people, our wonderful members. Uh, who are uh, uh, conscientious enough about your word, uh, who desire, who has fallen in love with your word, uh, who uh, wants a more excellent way. Bless them and keep them, I pray. Keep them safe uh, from great harm and danger and this inclement weather, uh, the virus of all kinds, and certainly more than anything else. Uh, keep them on the path of righteousness. Uh, we love you. We bless you. Uh, we praise your name. It is in the name of him who is our Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Go with God. Stay safe. Keep in mind, 
that we will start with chapter 13 uh, on next Wednesday, if it is the good Lord's uh, will. Um, we thank you so much for sharing with us today. And uh, we just want you to know, you know, we are concerned about you. We want you to be safe. Amen.